The Earth is like a fox on the run. The entire planet Earth has become like a terrified fox fleeing for its life from vicious, savage, dangerous maniacs pursuing it hell-bent on its destruction and death. Alarm bells are ringing all over the world. The rape of the Earth, a tortured planet, abused, tormented and dying, is a global meltdown, an ecological crisis of cataclysmic proportions. The global environment is being systematically destroyed. The aliens have seized control of governments, big businesses, armies, police forces, car manufacturers and oil companies in every country on the earth. The arseholes from Uranus have disguised themselves as police officers, soldiers, politicians, business people and public servants. The aliens are polluting the earth's atmosphere with toxic waste and poisonous fumes and are distributing dangerous drugs to young people. They are attempting to destroy the human race kill all the animals and flood the world with motor vehicles and consumer products. Full-scale alien invasion is imminent. The aliens will attack when they have replaced all the Earth's oxygen with the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide they need to breathe. The environmental destruction is now out of control. Atmospheric pollution has destroyed the ozone layer and the hole in it is now larger than Europe and it gets bigger every day. Global warming is melting the polar ice caps causing the sea levels to rise alarmingly. The Antarctic ice is cracking up and 400,000 square miles have vanished in the last few years. All the food and water has become poisonous to all forms of life and is killing off everything, including the entire human race. The rainforests and the wildlife are vanishing. Hunger, poverty and unemployment are increasing. There is worldwide economic depression caused by huge frauds by the banks. There are millions of child slaves in the third world. Famines and wars are killing hundreds of millions. There is a global epidemic of dangerous drugs and other atrocities and abominations. There is violence and horror in the films and television. Civilization is collapsing. Greed, crime, corruption and hypocrisy have replaced decency and integrity. To deliberately cause the earth to rot and fester and sink into the depths of depravity is the real criminal injustice of our times. Our filthy planet is a disgusting hellhole, a sea of squalor and despair, a pitiless polluted wasteland, the rubbish dump of the universe. The alien criminals dealing in death and destruction, corrupt politicians and crooked bankers are the human hunters who terrorize and kill and have the earth on the run screaming for its life. Beware of the aliens. They are everywhere. Destroying the planet, killing the innocent and causing general disaster. This is a message from the future to the people of the world warning that humanity faces extinction this century as a result of global warming and climate change. Can you save the human race is a master plan for the survival of humanity and an appeal for justice for the children. Act 1 is all about the panic on planet Earth and the inconvenient truth that our world is in danger which Al Gore has warned us about. Global warming is out of control, threatening humanity with extinction. Burning fossil fuels is causing a chain reaction of environmental disasters. The carbon dioxide in the atmosphere keeps rising all the time and the Earth's temperatures are increasing alarmingly. The glaciers and the polar ice caps are melting and the Antarctic ice shelves are breaking up and collapsing. Sea levels are rising, threatening hundreds of millions of people with becoming environmental refugees. Hurricanes are increasing in ferocity and intensity, contributing to the worldwide flooding, which will kill billions of people by the middle of the century, according to United Nations scientists. In his film, An Inconvenient Truth, Al Gore said, our ability to live is what is at stake. 
There is a state of emergency on the earth as the global crisis threatens an apocalyptic ecological cataclysm. The human race faces extinction, Professor Peter Barrett warned in November 2004. After 40 years, I'm part of a huge community of scientists who have become alarmed with our discovery that we know from our knowledge of the ancient past that if we continue our present growth path, we are facing extinction, not in millions of years or even millennia, but by the end of this century. Could this be the end of life on Earth? The Bilderberg climate criminals of banks, corporations and governments are committing crimes against humanity, but the environmental movement is fighting back in self-defense. Maybe we'll be ready for one day. Uh, maybe. Oh, you must not lose it. That's all right. Oh, there is it. Um, I'm going to wee, by the way, everybody. <laughs> We managed to make it all the way here with the amount of organization we've got. Anyway, Wednesday, um, yeah, Wednesday was our big day. Uh, we, we entered into uh, the city of London. One of our biggest demonstrations, uh, we got a 530 penguins to close down London Bridge. Um, a few examples of penguins are here. Um, after we closed down London Bridge, uh, we, had, we, we went down at the one side and came back up another. Um, we went to have some lunch in St Paul's Cathedral, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, we did some outreach work there, which was amazing. Um, and then... That's just a perfect time of how our outreach actually works. Um, we didn't actually enter Italy, so I don't know where we picked him up from, but um, yeah, we, uh, we also did a small demonstration outside Goldman Sachs, um, who have a banking company, uh, I'm going to be honest with Eon. No, involved with Eon. Why there we go. Um, we, we made a bit, of a, a, a bit of a noise out the front, um, the security were, were less than happy to let us in, uh, which gave us the idea of what we affectionately call the breakaway penguins. Uh, six penguins when traipsing through the streets of London. Um, well, penguin suits under arm at this point because we did have a police escort which we managed to lose. We then entered three different office buildings throughout London. Uh, these three buildings all had links to the oil industry. The first one we entered uh, was a marketing company for Shell. Uh, we went in, they never knew we were coming. Uh, we spent about 20 minutes within each one and we left. We then moved on to a, another marketing company uh, who were working for BAA um, and we also went into a marketing company for Eon as well. We uh, also had a, a breakaway, uh, a small contingent of us moved on to City Airport where we went to, uh, to City Airport. There was a decision being made as to whether, um, yeah go for it. Um, we went to Stratford to the town hall where the city council were going to make a decision about whether or not to increase flights at the city airport by 40%. Um, so we took our pop-up tents and we created the cab climate action outside the city town hall at Stratford. And we ain't gonna have any more runways round here and if we stand together we've got nothing to fear. Due to economic crisis and oil being very expensive and to the back of the climate camp at the first point, they decided to defer the decision until September. Moving on up, moving up, but then we went to. Okay. Oh, we're going to go to Hackney City Farm. This is where we had another party at Hackney City Farm. We went to Hackney City Farm, and from Hackney City Farm, we yeah, took yeah, our yeah, yeah, system yeah. up to the maximum volume and marched up to London Fields, and I had a big fat.
Sign painter that's painted the name on the side of the Cutty Carbon, that's why it says Cutty Crew. <laughs> <laughs> All respect to the. And then we went to Oxley's Wood, and in Oxley's Wood we had an event called Life Beyond Cars, which was organised partly by Vice Ecology. Yay! Yay! And we had we heard speeches from John Stewart and Roger Geffen, who were uh, involved in the, the campaign against the Oxley's Wood road building project which was a huge motorway that was going to go through the park in which we had our event and was a successful campaign based on a beat the bulldozers pledge which is what they've been talking about setting up at the Heathrow conference on the day we began and that's how we're going to stop Heathrow and that's how we're going to stop Kings North we're going to have everyone adopt a little bit of Sipson and adopt a little patch of land around here and say you're not building it and as this word it just so happened we were there on the 15th anniversary to the day of the victory rally that was held in the wood. And we heard, heard a very bit, li nice little bit of someone who, who had been involved in the campaign to protect the wood and later became the park ranger, essentially. And he told us about the ecology of the wood and then we walked out through the wood and got to experience it for ourselves before rejoining the road and doing a film night in the church all about the pleasures of bikes and... Well, the next night we did bike porn with the World Naked Bike Ride. <laughs> and then it was Friday. Yar, pirate bastard says, ten minutes to get down to the church garden and stop this faffing around. <laughs> We got on the road and stopped around the 10.13 hour to play a little game. Whoa. The game's called Sun and Moon, where you go around and we can start going around and you pick out two people. One person is your moon, the other person is your sun, and you try to create, try to create an eclipse between the moon and the sun. <laughs> so you do you remember everything kept picked out? Yeah, you have to keep it picked out? Uh-huh. Oh, no, no, no. It's really quite tricky. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Wait, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> no. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 no. 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 It looks like, oh, what, what's going on right now? I don't know if you were playing that at 10.15 on a Friday morning, but a partial solar eclipse, which was a total eclipse in Scandinavia, and we were able to see it through a little pinhole of paper and also through the trees. So let's, let's all look at the, the eclipse on the trees. Wow. Did anyone else see it? Yes. Looks like the eclipse is over, it's time to get back on the road. And throughout this whole caravan, we've had police liaisons who've kept a, a, kept a really an eye on us. They've let us do most of the traffic. Uh, they tried to chum it up with us, have conversations, and most of the time we sort of ignored them. Sometimes we, we got a little, uh, maybe a little too friendly and had a little too many conversations. Uh, and about an hour after we had our sun and moon uh, Eclipse celebration, which was the second day in a row. Oh my gosh! 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 Oh 
on. Uh, and, and apparently, about an hour before they, he he uh, got picked up, he uh, was was talking to the the police and and gave his name. To, like he'd been talking with them before and just dropped his name, and all of a sudden. I guess they picked him up for something that uh, apparently had happened at a protest months before. And so, just for a reminder, not to leave Maine to, to as friendly as police officers are, they still have a job to do, and they're still a part of the police state. Uh, and then after a long, long walk, up and down hills, and more hills, and more hills, and the blazing sunshine. Push the boat! Somebody push the boat! Oh, uh, no, not the boat. And the first, the first brakes went out, so we had to be... Uh, Locals with the not having us to, to North, North Fleet? North Fleet. North Fleet, where we slept among the graves, where the graves were used as <laughs> paving stones uh, in parts of it. And, and we had a nice classic Best Ecology Cinema with the World Naked Bike Ride, which we should all be a part of next year. And that turned into Saturday. Mm. Yes. I don't want to. I, I, I can go. I can go in the photo bed today. Can anyone step in? Can anyone go with me? Oh, we got a banner. Yeah. Oh, can yeah. someone yeah. take yeah. my bike? I'm going to my guitar. If I'm going in. Can we? Can we? Okay. Who? Who goes this way? Who's going in the photo bed today? Actually, Saturday was a nice and relaxed day, and the block was had a bit of a break because it was sunny, and we actually got into the countryside, Ooh. which was what we sort of like caravanners like me had sort of in mind from the very beginning, <laughs> and that until they actually went to the middle of London and sort of got all confused. But okay, so Sunday is Saturday was 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 what I thought it was. But anyway, but 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 on the way, some something sort of happened. We got to the Shell station, and I actually walked off, but then something happened. Oh, let's know what the off station is on the off side of the road. Get into it without getting into a real mess and getting your car and fucking help. Let's walk into the forecourt. Oh my god, there's an oil tanker. Shut up, Get out of there. interaction with the tanker driver. We said life's not good for the people of Mayo and wherever you pull your up at the ground. It's not good. He went, well, life's a bitch. Someone else said, yeah, actually, well, the most important thing you can do, he said, well, what's, uh, did you get your pay rise, mate? A better way of interacting with the guy. And the police started filming us from Kent and there was a massive traffic jam. We were having more fun than the guys and the, and the families in their cars. And then we toodled off down the road. No, no, okay, keep going, keep going, keep going, but uh, oh, go. today we actually arrived in Stroud and we were welcomed very, very friendly by a lot of people who actually um, really supported what we were doing. So we were quite happy to arrive there and, and, and hear that. Hear about the climate caravan, you want to hear about the climate caravan? So we had a bit of outreach that evening, quite a few people came along to our uh, outreach event. And, uh, and then we were going to bed to do that final day of the caravan. That was Sunday. And on Sunday, we rolled on down into Rochester, a mighty caravan, well practiced in our moves of blocking the road Can you and travelling. <laughs> <laughs> Just play the James Brown. And we rocked up into Rochester for the climate rally. And having been told the night before that they had no way of getting their generator to the site, so they couldn't power the PA, we asked, "Well, why are you using the generator anyway? Shouldn't you be using pedal power?" And so we rocked up with two bikes, pedal powered bikes, and we plugged it into the PA. We got a moment's notice, and we provided the sound for the speakers at the rally. And the dancing bear! Yeah. Dancing bear is in the house, the dancing bear, the dancing polar bear. Oh, and yeah. then we rolled along the climate at LA, all the way to King's Rock, providing some funky tunes for the marchers. And we got all the way to 
and then the caravan marched on to the climate camp and we started singing Why don't we do it in the road? Why don't we do it in the road? Having been sunny for almost the entire caravan, the most beautiful weather imaginable, beating sun, tanning bodies, it decided at the point where we were to be searched by the police that the heavens would open upon us. Ah! And a great rain fell! And the great cutty carbon melted. And the great cutty carbon made of cardboard melted, melted. <laughs> like the ice caps themselves. Oh, oh, oh. Who did all the cooking that filled our stomachs from the food that was born from the earth? Okay. Thank you very much to the cooks. Yeah. And then, having been searched and having got through with all our stuff, nearly, only missing a few small items, we rode up to the climate camp where we received the most wonderful welcome, the most wonderful welcome. The cheering was something else. Uh, every step of the way was worth it for that welcome, and it's been so utterly moving and fantastic. We've reached everyone out there, we've had so much positive vibe from London Town, and we've had double extra beautiful extra positive vibes from you guys since we got here, so thank you. from King's North to Copenhagen. Driver! That's a free sound system, that's 50 sound system. sing Dancing in the Street, or maybe not quite, so we sing another verse of Down the Wheels of the Caravan, go round and round. Don't forget the polar bear doing his thing so funkily.
Oh, I'd get a word with your uncle. I'll patch things up for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, problem. Mm. Not really. Is it all right if I shout? I suppose it's not abusive. What's a scream? What's a blue? What's a move? Right, okay, Inspector. Right, will you keep talking? I'll keep filming. That seems fair enough, isn't it? Last year, we went up right in front of me I love you so much with your cameras please call me some more Mr. Cameraman keep filming the <laughs> 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 I'm going to get you Plenty in here, you're all right. Yeah, you're all right. <laughs> Great to come, so you receive me. This is K3 to come. Lots of gone out outside the box. We have round about at least 40, at least 40 outlines outside. Who's that behind? Three or four people. And you're nice. And deal with some sexual behaviour. This is anti-social behaviour. I tried to do that once, and I got a terrible burn.
Exactly what we're saying, but he's he's more interested in. Re
when you've um, sweated your paint. The dragon's Eon. Dragon's over there.
tonight. We're here on the weeds tonight. We're on the weeds tonight. Here today, so. we because they know we're here to say, Kings North, 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 North
of your soul? and building renewables, we will improve the job prospects of the whole area. So, we don't need, nor do we want a new coal-fired station, no to new coal. Time to camp. I think we really have to take our praise for what is happening here today. We have been trying for 40 years to get climate change really on the agenda. Now it's become mainstream. Yeah! Of the 60s and 70s, corporatization took over. It's doing the same thing again. Carbon trading, um, renewable, ele- uh, renewable energy, all these things, everything is being subject to corporatization. Now, Um, Once you get it subject to corporatization, you start on the exploitation trip. Why are we constantly trying to expand? Why are we all... uh, This is what is driving climate change. This trip that we must always expand. And the reason that we must... And that is that... I know we have had very beautiful fluffy police today and some police who have not been quite so fluffy and lovely. However,